Shiloh Network News with Dr. Scott Stripling. Hi, I'm Scott Stripling. It's Thursday, the fourth day of our excavation in season three at Ancient Shiloh. We're here in square AF30. Kevin Larson, Dr. Kevin Larson is the square supervisor. Kevin, you got something interesting here. Yeah, yesterday we came down on what appears to be and we're very confident is a floor. Uh, it's got some remains of some plaster and it's hard compact and it goes out uh, about uh, two meters and is about uh, three meters wide at this point. And this is the type of pottery that's coming off of it and this is what we would call Iron Age. Very, very clearly this is an Iron Age storage jar on floor level. So we call this a sealed locust and why is that important Kevin? With a sealed locust, then we know what is found underneath of it uh, is not contaminated. And so it will really help us with dating. That's one, one piece. Uh, since, since it's sealed, uh, later occupation uh, would not be underneath the floor. So we'll get a very clear stratigraphy here. And so we would then extrapolate that if we're getting um, iron one on top of the floor that underneath we're going to have Bronze Age material, late bronze and middle bronze material, unless there's another phase of the iron one. Right. But uh, for us, this is, this is like gold in dating, isn't it? Yes. Steve Rudd reporting live from the Shiloh Network News. Yes, this is where it's happening in the war room. We are doing some reconstructive work with three of our professional dig staff. First of all, we have with us... Hi, I'm Abigail Levitt. And then we have... Hello, my name is Tim Lopez. And... Ruth Vanderford. Yes. So, um, first of all, Abby, tell me, what are you doing here? We are trying to reconstruct a Roman glass bowl. Okay. And so tell me uh, how you do this in the process. Well, we play a puzzle and we try to put the pieces back together and then we have to clean the edges and then glue them. And you must use some amazing high-tech, scientifically, you know, designed glue. Tell me, show me, what do you use? We are using Elmer's school glue. Uh, that is, that is very, very surprising. Okay, so, um, how do you take the process uh, from one step to the next, from these sherds, these little individual fragments and pieces, uh, into a restored bowl? Well, as we find pieces that go together, we're beginning to glue sections into larger chunks. Yes. And hopefully, eventually, they'll all work their way into a complete bowl. So, um, what is this that we're looking at here? This is upside down. It's the rim of the vessel, um, so it should be on the top but right now it's sitting there to dry. Okay, so can you tell me um, what does this particular vessel look like? Um, it's probably a small bowl about so big. Um, it has a flared rim and then it comes down and then flattens for the bottom. And what would such a bowl like this be used for? Well, it may have been used um, as a serving bowl. Um, Glass is probably a little more expensive than pottery, so it might have been a nicer, nicer dish. So can you tell me uh, when was this kind of glass first manufactured uh, in the ancient Near East, and when did it go out of use? Glass blowing was invented um, right around year zero, and it was actually invented in Israel. They had the earliest blown glass vessels, became quite popular, and it is still in use today. That's amazing. So what you're saying is Jesus would have used this kind of glass product. It's quite possible. Excellent. So, um, Ruth, uh, what are you doing down at that far end? Um, I see you're looking at little pieces. And so tell me, what are you doing here? I'm trying to fit the little pieces back together, and it is very difficult. <laughs> uh, I understand. And um, so... What, what exactly are all these little tiny uh, shiny things that I'm seeing all over in between the pieces? What is that? Yeah, so you have the piece of glass like this. Yes. You, you can see it through. Yes. But on top of it, there are some, uh, a layer, uh, you can see it here, mm -hmm. that falls, falls off very easily. Yes. And uh, so, Abby, what, what is that layer? Um, we call it patina, and it is basically the crud that builds up over a couple of thousand of years. Well, that's surprising. 
I, I thought it was part of the, the pretty decoration because it's, it's very, it's like, it's effervescent and it's shiny like, like a seashell or something like that. So you're saying that is not what the original container looked like? No. No, that is built up. Okay. sitting in the ground. So uh, when you're finished this, where will this vessel go? Will it go into a museum? It'll probably go into storage unless we get it on loan to put in a museum. It belongs to the country of Israel. Okay. Well, guys, signing off for the Shiloh Network News. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You don't want the truth. Because deep down in places, you don't talk about at parties. You want me on this wall. You need me on this wall. There's no crying in archaeology. Stop it. Okay. It's mine. It's my precious. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I just can't tolerate this kind of sloppy archaeology. Iron Age. I just know things. Oh, yes. The past can hurt, but you can either run from it or learn from it. Inconceivable! Just kidding.